Hi, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll explain you how the internet actually works. Have you ever wondered what actually happens in the background when you type in a URL in your browser, say for example, amazon.com? So what really happens is your browser searches through the internet for the Amazon server to get back the HTTP request that is the shopping website which you had requested for. Now to do that, your browser would require the unique IP address of your particular Amazon server. Each system connected through the internet has a unique public IP address. Even your system has an IP address. You can check it in whatsmyip.org. In order to map this URL, amazon.com, with its correct IP address, there exists a central database in internet known as DNS or domain name system. DNS is nothing but a collection of host names mapped with the IP addresses. Consider DNS similar to a telephone book. Just like in telephone book, you have names and their phone numbers. The DNS has host names mapped to the IP addresses of all the systems in the internet. So how the DNS mapping of your website address with its corresponding IP address happens is, your browser will first search in the browser cache to see if there is a DNS record for your website address. If a DNS record is not found in the browser cache, it will search in the OS cache. That is, it will search in the operating system cache from where you are trying to log into that particular website. If the DNS record is not present in the OS cache also, it will go and check in the router cache. Routers will have its own cache with the DNS records. And if the mapping is found there, it will return from there. And if the DNS record is not present in the router cache also, it will go and check in the internet service provider cache. And wherever that particular DNS record where the mapping of the host name with the particular IP address is found, it will return to the browser. Now what if the particular DNS record for the mapping of your URL with its IP address is not present in any of the caches? In that case, your internet service provider will have its own DNS server which will fire a DNS query to the DNS servers present in the internet. Such a query will be a recursive query because each DNS servers in the internet will be passing on this query to find the correct DNS record for our host name. The domain hierarchy of this recursive searching works in this fashion. We'll have a root domain that is dot extension. So if the DNS record is not found here, it will go below to the top level domain that is dot edu, dot org, dot gov, dot com, etc. So in our case, our URL is www.amazon.com. So since it's a dot com extension, we'll select the dot com top level domain. And from here, it will go and search in the second level domain or amazon.com. And if the DNS record is not found in the second level domain, we have a third level domain below it to search further. So if this is the root domain, from the root domain, it will search for the top level domain of dot com. So finally, when the amazon.com DNS server has been found, we'll get the mapping of the IP address for the particular URL, which will be returned back to the ISP and to the browser. So this is how DNS mapping work when we don't have that particular record in the cache. So once the DNS record has been found and your browser has the IP address of the Amazon server, it will go and connect to that particular Amazon web server. So the connection in web happens using protocols. It can be a TCP IP or a UDP protocol. So most of the HTTP calls are TCP IP protocol. What happens in a TCP IP connection is there is a three way handshake between the client and the server before a connection is established. The client will first send a SYN packet to the server. And then the server will send back an acknowledgement and a SYN packet to the client. Then again, the client will send back the acknowledgement for receiving that particular package. Once this three-way handshake has been completed, the TCP IP connection starts between the server and the client. And now the browser can request an HTTP GET to the Amazon Web Server. And if that GET request requires some data from the database, the web server will connect to the database server and get that data from the database. Once the server response has been generated, the server will send back the HTTP response back to the browser and you will be able to see the Amazon website on your browser. To sum up, when we open a website in our browser, 
the browser checks in the DNS cache for the DNS record of the particular URL. If the DNS record is not found, it will check in the DNS root domain. When the DNS record is found, the browser will connect to the web server using the IP address and there will be a TCP IP handshake between the client and the web server. Once the TCP IP connection is established, we'll send a HTTP GET request from the client and HTTP response will be sent back and the website will open. Hope the information was helpful to you. Thank you for watching my video.